हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकेट एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द रिमोट सेंसिंग एंड जीआईएस frequently asked and most expected questions in the entrance examination be it environmental science net set or phd msc entrance examination so in this video we are going to know about some of the important numericals formulas and also the concepts behind the remote sensing and gis so without much delay let's get started so here comes the questions on your screen and the first question is in the remote sensing DTM is an abbreviation for what and I will wait for certain seconds then I will reveal the answer. So here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, DTM full form is digital terrain model and this DTM provides a bare earth representation of terrain or surface topography. So if there is any terrain or any surface topography we want to study then this remote sensing technique of DTM digital terrain model helps us to find all the details about the topography and terrain of the earth surface. So let's move to the second question. The second question is in satellite remote sensing the spectral bands near 1.4 micrometer and 1.9 micrometer are avoided because of which of the following. So this is the concept part related to remote sensing analysis and here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, in the bands near 1.4 to 1.9, the water present in the vegetation and leaves, they absorb the spectral bands near 1.4 and 1.9 micrometer. As a result, it is not suitable to do the remote sensing in these two regions. So that's why these two spectral bands are avoided in the remote sensing study because of the absorption by the water present in the vegetation. Let's move to the third question. The third question is the scale of an aerial photograph is determined by the focal length of the camera and which of the following. So here the correct option will be the option number A. Yes, the flying height above the ground of the camera be it through the hot air balloon or any other vehicle carrying the camera the height above the ground and the focal length of the camera these two things are used to find the scale of any aerial photography so this aerial photography is important and most often the questions are coming from the numericals related to this concept and you should know what is the formula this formula is very simple to find out the scale of the aerial photograph the formula is focal length by the flying height above the ground level so let us assume this is the place where the camera is placed through the any of the body carrying the camera and we have to take the image of the ground and so here we will know the focal length of the camera if we don't know the focal length but we know the scale and height of the flying height above the ground we can find the focal length of the camera so these all are interlinked so the formula is focal length of the camera divided by height that is the flying height above the ground level will give the scale of that aerial photography and this question is one of the frequently asked question as I have said in the entrance examination so one more thing you should also know there is one more formula so this thing also you should note down if the terrain is not flat if it is having any unevenness or it is above the sea level the ground level is not plain then that time the formula which you will use for the scale or representative fraction so the scale is also called as the rf value that is the representative fraction you should note down the formula that time will be focal length as it was in the previous slide divided by the capital h minus the small h so what is this capital h capital is the flying altitude capital H and small h is the average ground elevation so you should eliminate the ground elimination ground level that's why this formula is used if it is not plain if it is uneven then you will use the formula of scale that is focal length of the camera divided by capital H minus small h so in this picture as you can see here this is the camera where it is located above the ground and it will be having its focal length of the lens and here 
you should know that this is the flying height so from the sea level the camera is flying here so the lens is over here so it will be here the camera so then what will happen we have to subtract it with the height of the ground that is the above sea level because we have to take the picture of this place only so we have to eliminate this height above the sea level that is the small h that is the height of the ground so this only height which is required for the formula to find the scale or rf value so this is the formula focal length divided by capital h minus small h which is the height above the ground of the sea level so i hope it is clear let's move to the next slides for the other questions the other question is on your screen the question is the reflectance from a surface is called a specular reflection if it follows which of the following laws so here the correct option will be option number a snell's law if the phenomena is following then it will be called as the specular reflection of that surface and this formula also you should note down the formula is n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 so what is this n1 n2 sin theta we all will know here so let us take this example that a light is coming and it is hitting the surface so let us assume this is the air this is the air and here it is the water so water is denoted as w so from air medium the light is coming to the water medium so what it will experience it will experience refraction yes it is not reflection it is refraction bending of the light because the change in the medium because the density will be different so that's why there will be angle of incidence we should know that that is theta 1 and also angle of refraction or refracted angle that is given as theta 2 and here n1 and n2 are the difference in the refractive index refractive index of air is given as n1 refractive index of water is given as n2 so we can say this is the incident index and this is the refracted index so you should note it down that for air the refractive index or the incident index you should always take as 1 the value of n1 in the case of air medium will be 1 and in case of the water medium at standard temperature and pressure the value will be 1.33 so this is important to note down n1 n2 of air and water 1 and 1.33 respectively at standard condition so what we will get from here we can get if you know the n1 n2 then if you know any of this angle that is if we know the incidence angle then we can find the angle of refraction from this formula that is n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 or if we know the refractive index of any one medium and we know the angle of incidence and angle of refraction so we can calculate the refractive index of the other medium from this formula which is very very important i would suggest you to write down all these things coming to the next slide with some more questions the question is the ratio of the total solar radiant energy returned by a planetary body or any surface to the total radiant energy incident on the body will be called as what and here the correct option will be option number c it will be called as albedo yes let us take an example that here there is the sun so sun is giving the energy to this surface that is the earth surface let us assume so this is telling total solar radiant energy returned by the body or the surface so how much of energy will be returned from this surface let us assume as the r so r will be the return energy divided by to the total radiant energy incident on the body so how much of energy is incident on it let us assume it as i so r by i will give the phenomena that is known as the albedo of this surface and it varies from the soil water all surface are having different albedo because they will radiate different energy based on their surface characteristics so now let's move on to the next question the next question is which of the following is the satellite for measuring the precipitation and here the correct option will be option number b trmm satellite is used for measuring the precipitation and you should know the full form of this because one of the ugc net paper was asking about the full form of trmm and you should know the full form is 
ट्रॉपिकल रेनफॉल मेजरिंग मिशन द नेम ऑफ द सेटेलाइट ट्रॉपिकल रेनफॉल मेजरिंग मिशन यू शुड ऑल्सो नो द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ ऑल दीज थिंग्स ऑल्सो स्टार्टिंग विद द जी आर ए सी ई द फुल फॉर्म इज ग्रेविटी रिकवरी एंड क्लाइमेट एक्सपेरिमेंट विच इज अ जॉइंट प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ नासा एंड द जर्मन स्पेस दैट इज ग्रेविटी रिकवरी एंड क्लाइमेट एक्सपेरिमेंट कमिंग टू द एस्टर ए एस टी ई आर दैट इज द फुल फॉर्म इज इट इज अ जैपनीज सेंसर which is the full form is advanced space borne thermal emission and reflection radiometer i repeat advanced space borne thermal emission and reflection radiometer and finally the full form of spot is a french satellite which is satellite pour i observation de la terre so it is a satellite for observation of the earth once the question was there which satellite is used for the observation of earth and the option spot was there so it will be recognized as the correct option now coming to the next question the next question is soil moisture using remote sensing techniques is best determined in which of the following regions of the emr and here the correct option will be option number c microwave region or microwave remote sensing is the best technique to determine the soil moisture content so i hope you have learned something new and you have noted down all these things with the formulas if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and if you like this don't forget to like share and subscribe the channel to get all further updates stay tuned for the next video